Seeing as the dwarves often keep themselves to themselves and stay away from any of the major conflicts throughout the history of Middle Earth, and even when involved the details are much less, this video has proved quite difficult to make. So categorizing the dwarves and their power individually based on their feats in battle is extremely difficult. So rather than judging their power or strength by who they have defeated, we are going to list them based off their influence in Middle Earth. So again, in no particular order, this is a list of the most legendary dwarves to ever live in Middle Earth. We will start the list with the most obvious, Durin the First also known as Durin the Deathless for his extremely long life. He was the first of the seven fathers of the dwarves, the founder of the city of khazad and the first king of the Longbeards, also known as Durin's Folk, the most famous of the dwarven clans. The Longbeards actually believed that Durin would return to them seven times, reincarnated into a different dwarf named Durin, and each of these reincarnations would rule as king. He did in fact have six descendants that were named Durin, all of which ruled as king of Durin's folk. So Durin founded the city of khazad later known as Moria, which for years and years was the greatest dwarven city in Middle-earth, and of course played a very important role in key events throughout the Third Age. Also, Durin's axe is a legendary heirloom that, while not confirmed, most likely belonged to Durin the Deathless, and was found by Balin on his expedition into Moria in 2989 of the Third Age. So while we don't really have any information on how strong or powerful Durin the First was, his influence and legend that he left behind is indisputable. So speaking of Balin, next on our list we have the son of Fundin, elder brother to Dwalin, Balin. He was of course one of the dwarves that joined Gandalf and Bilbo on the quest to reclaim Erebor. He fought in the Battle of Azanul Bazaar in 2799, a battle where many great dwarves, including his father Fundin, was slain. He was later involved in a quest led by Thrain to return to Erebor, as they had long been pushed out by the dragon Smaug. However, Sauron had them in his sights as he was eager to take the dwarven ring of power back. One night as the dwarves were crossing the Anduin, an evil rain forced them into Mirkwood where they were split. Thrain was never seen again. He had of course actually been captured and taken to Dol Guldur. Balin and Dwalin would return to the Blue Mountains to report to Thorin, the new king of Durin's line. As mentioned, he would of course play a big role in the main quest of Erebor, fighting valiantly in and surviving the Battle of the Five Armies. Years later then, Balin longed to return to Moria hoping to regain many of the lost treasures there. King Dane Ironfoot had counseled against it, but Balin decided to lead an expedition there anyway. With his company of dwarves, they were victorious in a small battle at the Great Gates and entered the Great City. Balin set up his throne in the chamber of Mazabul and proclaimed himself the Lord of Moria. The colony actually thrived for five years, finding many great treasures. Mithril, weapons, and armories, but in 2994 of the Third Age, Balin was shot by an orc archer. His body was laid to rest in the tomb in the chamber of Mazabul. The orc archer was just a scout for a large force of orcs who fought with the remaining dwarves in the Great Halls before their final stand in the chamber. But in the end, the dwarven colony of Moria was completely wiped out, and no news of what happened there was discovered until the Fellowship of the Ring came about Balin's tomb not long after leaving Rivendell on their own quest. Now having been, albeit different degrees of successful in most of these quests, makes Balin a true legendary dwarf. Next up we are going to talk about probably the most well-known dwarf, the only dwarf from the Fellowship of the Ring, Gimli. Now Gimli is to be considered for this list for many reasons. Of course he was an extremely formidable warrior, having played a huge role in many of the key battles during the War of the Ring. But he has not made this list only for his skill in battle, but through the fame he achieved by essentially bridging the torn relationship of the elves and the dwarves. It is said that his heart softened when meeting Galadriel, the Lady of Light, while in Lothlorien. He asked her for a single strand of her hair, and she gave him three. A gift of very special importance, which we may expand on in a future video. Anyway, by the time the Fellowship departed Lothlorien, Gimli had become friends with Legolas the Elf, as a result of Galadriel's kindness to him. His new relationship with the Elves made him famous amongst all the dwarves in Middle-earth. After his great deeds fighting in the War of the Ring, he returned to the Glittering Caves behind Helm's Deep with a contingent of dwarves and became the Lord of the Glittering Caves. 
He rebuilt the gates of Minas Tirith out of mithril and steel, and completed many great works throughout both Gondor and Rohan. Then in the year 120 of the Fourth Age, he sailed to Valinor with his best friend Legolas, making him the first, and as far as we know, the only dwarf to ever do so. Next up we have Thorin. Thorin was born in the Lonely Mountain at the time when Thror, his grandfather, was king. He was still very young when Smaug descended upon Erebor, forcing the surviving dwarves into exile. Thror, disillusioned, wandered to the eastern gate of Moria, which was overrun by orcs and was slain by Azog. This began the War of the Dwarves and the Orcs. It was a long and grueling war that ended in victory for the dwarves at the Battle of Azanul Bizar. Thorin fought in this battle but was wounded. His shield was broken in the process and he used an oak branch to block the blows of his enemies. In memory of this, he swore to always use the plain oak shield until he was made king. Because of this, he was nicknamed Oakenshield. He of course led the 13 dwarves on a quest to reclaim Erebor, a quest that was successful. During the Battle of the Five Armies, he called all of the dwarves, elves and men to him to unite against the armies of orcs and wargs. The free peoples were successful, but sadly, Thorin was fatally wounded, and before his death, he apologised to Bilbo for his harsh words and actions. But despite some of his traits of stubbornness and greed during the quest for Erebor, Thorin was an extremely focused and very brave dwarf, and reclaiming Erebor was no small feat. He certainly cannot be left off any list about the most legendary dwarves, for without him, Erebor may not have belonged to the dwarves during the War of the Ring, potentially making the Battle of Dale a very different battle. But that's a discussion again for another time. Next up we have my personal favourite dwarf, Dane Ironfoot. Now Dane is one of the few dwarves that we know of that fought in three of the major dwarven battles during the Third Age. The Battle of Azanul Bazaar, the Battle of Five Armies and the Battle of Dale. He didn't just fight in them, but he had some kind of major feat in each of these battles. In the Battle of Azanul Bazaar, he actually cut off the head of Azog before the Eastern Gate of Moria, at the extremely young age of 32, very young for a dwarf. This was considered a magnificent feat and brought fame and respect to Dane amongst the dwarves from very early on in his life. After this battle, King Thrain wanted to re-enter Moria, but it was actually Dane that dissuaded him having the wisdom to know that it would be impossible for Durin's folk to return there because of Durin's bane. During the Battle of Five Armies, Dane came to Thorin's aid with the intention of defending the mountain from the men and elves that also wanted to claim some of the treasures inside, but after Gandalf informed them of the approaching orcs and wargs, they all united and fought together. Dane had brought 500 of his well-armed dwarves to the battle. After the death of Thorin at the battle, Dane was made king under the mountain and king of all of Durin's folk. During his reign he became very rich and his people prosperous. They helped rebuild the town of Dale and the dwarves of Erebor became great friends with the men of Dale and the elves of Mirkwood. Unfortunately, not all of the dwarves were content and as previously mentioned, Balin wanted to reclaim Moria. King Dane did not give his blessing, but he could not dissuade Balin of course, we know how that turned out. During the War of the Ring, war came to Erebor in the Battle of Dale. The fighting lasted for three days, and dwarves and men were pushed back by the Easterling army. Brand, King of Dale at the time, was killed, and Dane, at the old age of 250, stood and defended the body of his fallen friend. He fought like a young, fearsome dwarf, still more fierce than most. Eventually, he was overwhelmed and killed, a true hero's death. If you guys would like to request a full video on Dane, let us know in the comments down below. We do actually have a full video on the Battle of Dale if you want to check that out. Finally then, we are going to include Azagal. He was Lord of Belagost during the First Age. Azagal joined the Union of Mithros during the Battle of the Unnumbered Tears. He, along with the Dwarves of Belagost, covered the retreat of Feanor and his sons by surrounding the Dragon Glaurung. They attacked him with their axes for even dragon scales were not strong enough to protect Glaurung from the blows of dwarven axes. In his rage, Glaurung struck down Azagal and crawled over him. With his last breath, the dwarven lord drove his knife into the dragon's belly, injuring him bad enough that Glaurung fled the battlefield, with many of the other beasts of Angband joining him. Now while not much else is known about him, he had to be included in this list for single-handedly injuring Glaurung. 
Okay, guys, don't forget that this list was not in any order. This is just a few of who we considered to be amongst the most legendary dwarves. There were, of course, so many to choose from. If you'd like to leave your lists, and if you wish, in order, in the comments down below, we would love to discuss these with you. Okay, that's it from me today, my friends. Time, as always, has come to thank our patrons. And an extra special shout-out goes to the members of our highest tiers. Kevin, Abraham, Matt, Glorfindel of Gondolin, Nasheath, Denver Steel, Gregory, John, Andrew, and Pirate747. You guys are supporting this short film, and we could not be more grateful. We will have some more updates for you over the next few weeks, so stay tuned and keep your fingers crossed for us for no more interruptions. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword.